What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Brandon Coin YouTube channel. And today's video is going to be for the new miners looking to get started. Uh, this is basically the easiest way to get a rig and get it up and running. Uh, it cuts out a lot of the you know risers and cables, variables. Uh, it's just simple. Plug, play, get it up and running. So let me show you what you guys need. And then um, before you know it, you'll be hashing. So let me flip the screen on over here. All right, so the first thing you are going to need is a motherboard. A lot of people previously were using uh, gaming motherboards because mining motherboards have skyrocketed in price. Uh, but one, one area that hasn't skyrocketed in price is riserless motherboards. So what I mean by riserless motherboards are motherboards like this. Uh, you don't run riser cables up and have dedicated risers for each individual card. These are long motherboards that actually have full-size PCI Express slots on them. And you literally just put your cards on each slot so these are eight card motherboards and one of the like big benefits in my opinion is they come pre-installed with the cpu a drawback is you're not going to be able to repurpose this into a gaming machine because the cpus are soldered to the motherboard and the motherboard is not uh, a normal atx or atx style mount um, but if you want to get a mining rig up and running and you don't want to have all the extra hassle of buying a motherboard, buying a CPU, buying riser cables, boom, this is your option. The only thing this motherboard is going to need to run is DDR3 SODIMM memory. So I'll show you that here in a second, but you're looking at about 170 or anywhere from 150 to $200 is, is what these run. So this is the S37. It's got the blue slots on it. Be careful which riserless motherboard you buy. The spacing on some of them is closer or farther apart. The S37, from my experience, seems to be some of the wider spacing. I have two of these. I'm running them. It leaves a little gap in between the cards, and they don't run nearly as hot when you compare them to the BTC37. So this is, like, I'd say the original model, and it's hard to tell in the pictures. Oh, it actually shows you the spacing on one of these pictures, but these are spaced closer together, and when you plug cards in these bad boys... The cards are going to be really, really close, and the cards will actually run quite a bit hotter if you don't have a fan or fans blowing through them. What I have on mine is a box fan in front of it, and that blows air through all the cards, and everything seems to be running pretty smoothly at that point. Uh, but these are typically a little cheaper because they're just not as good. Um, now, a lot of people get hung up on what CPU comes in these things. You're not going to be doing any CPU mining. I mean, I guess you could, but I wouldn't recommend it. They're most of the time little cheap Celerons, and the only purpose is there to essentially just run the board. Um, both of these do have a VGA display output, so you can plug a monitor into it. You can do a little bit of diagnostic, stuff like that. These are not going to be set up to, to be comfortable running Windows. These are going to be for running like Hive OS, Simple Miner, or SMOS, any Linux-based dedicated mining software, uh, because it's it's a lot lighter load on the CPU and it's more specific just for mining. It doesn't load up a bunch of extra stuff. Um, now, do be mindful of the delivery times. Even though they're on Amazon, these are not Prime items. So, for example, this one's 169 with $10 shipping, but it it might take as long as January 19th to get here. Whereas this one's 159 and it could be here as early as December 16th through the 22nd. Um, and then I found this one right here. You can actually get a faster delivery option all the way up to December 8th through the 13th, but you're going to pay a little bit more. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, 200 bucks for a, a motherboard? That's a lot of money. I can get a really nice motherboard. Um, one way you can think of it uh, is buying a standard gaming motherboard for $100 and then buying a CPU. Say you can get one for 50 bucks. Right now, they're going upwards of $75 to $100, and then you have to buy RAM, and then you have to buy risers. Before you know it, you've already spent more money on a, a gaming motherboard. Now, if you can find a dedicated like H110 Pro BTC or like the, the B350, like a, a dedicated mining motherboard for 12, 13 plus cards, and you can find it for cheap, which I would say, you know, under 200 bucks, because you still have to buy risers for those. You may be able to go that way, but then you still have to buy a CPU. It just, it gets expensive. Whereas these are tight. They're all together. You don't have to fight with risers. I like them. I really do. Um, now, for all of these, you will need RAM for them. 
Uh, you can see I've actually last, last purchased this RAM a while back. So DDR3, uh, L actually stands for low voltage, but that's compatible with all these motherboards. Uh, an 8 gigabyte stick is plenty. Um, I, I do know if you use a 2 gigabyte stick, it will not work. Um, it was having issues actually loading Hive, I believe it was. So don't use a 2 gig stick. Um, 4 gigabyte will work. I actually have one rig running 4, but I recommend an 8 gig because potentially with you know software updates and stuff in the future having a little headroom is not a bad idea and it's 20 bucks 24.99 that's not bad this is actually prime so it'll be here you know within days um but the last thing so you got motherboard you got ram you don't need a cpu it's built in you don't need risers those are essentially built onto the motherboard but you need to power them so um over at parallel miner they actually have these gold uh light on 750 watt power supplies these are 62 dollars right now they come with six cables you can bump it up to eight or ten or even 16 cables uh that puts you back 96 dollars um and obviously it gets cheaper the more or less cables you use to power these motherboards they actually run off of six pin cables so let me see if i can get a good picture so i can show you all right so on the back of the motherboard they have these six pin slots those are the pci express six pin that you guys are you know aware of um on most of them the first two slots are actually will run the motherboard and then the rest power the risers i believe that's how it is what i do is i go ahead and plug in all of my motherboard power cables and you're you're fine to actually split these i do split mine so split each cable two ways. So I technically only use one, two, three, four cables just to power the motherboard. And then the rest I use for my cards because these slots are limited to 75 watts. Um, now, depending on that, you just buy the amount of cables you need. You can buy cables independently on Parallel Miner. Um, or you might be able to step up and get you a bigger power supply like a 1200 watt. The prices on these are unfortunately going up because more people are using them. So if you got you a 1200 watt with say, you know, 16 cables, it's $181. That's super, that's super expensive, but it is a platinum. And I mean, these server power supplies are pretty much bulletproof. I'm running, most of my farm either has one or all dedicated to server power supplies. Um, it's just kind of the way of the future. Um, or it's, it's not the way of the future. It's, it's actually the way of the past because these are old power supplies, but it's a way for really, really rock steady, solid power now a lot of people don't like buying from parallel miner right now because their prices keep going up and up but that's the market we live in there are other options you can go on to ebay uh but i've noticed ebay prices are even going up too so a 750 watt with how many cables does this one got uh it doesn't say oh there it is so 750 watt with 10 cables and a breakout board on eBay. This one's 95 bucks. Um, it's like there's no there's no cheap way of getting around it. Uh, 750 watt, 125. The 1200 watts are even more. So I'd almost rather buy from a reputable seller, which Parallel Miner. I've only ever had a problem with one of their items. I received it. It didn't power on. I emailed them back and they were just like, yeah, send it back. We'll send you another one. No big deal. Um, whereas if you buy from eBay, you're buying at your own discretion because it could be a whole host of all kinds of different sellers. Um, I have seen where people, you could buy like power supplies and then you can buy the breakout board separately. So that may be a cheaper option, um, but you don't know what you're getting essentially. So just buyer beware. Uh, you, you definitely can do it. I'm not saying you can't, but just one thing you gotta look out for. So once you have your motherboard, you have your RAM, and you have power supply all you all you do is plug in the, your motherboard to power you turn your power supply on and then those motherboards are set to power on when they see power so as soon as you do that you power on that that little the little button i'll actually show you here on a server power supply see this on off right there that button you click that button that turns that power supply on and then it will power on your motherboard once your motherboard's on, it'll be looking to fire up an operating system after it does the power on self-test or post. And what I typically use is Hive uh, or Hive on or Hive OS. 
I'll do a Hive OS how-to section down below in the description. So if you're looking for Hive, but that can be run on any little USB drive. So you can get like a, a, a USB, um, uh, we'll do a 16 gig flash drive. So I think you can actually run them on an eight gig, but a little 16 gig, eight bucks, you're good to go. You're up and mining. So for, let's, let's do a little rough math here. Let's say you got 200 bucks in a motherboard and RAM, and then you get, you know, $10 in a USB drive. And say you start out, say you just go Mac Daddy and get you a 1200 watt with, we'll do eight cables. I ah, might as well, might as well step it up. 16 cables, only four, you know, 30 bucks more for another eight cables. So you're looking at less than $400 will get you up and ready to run eight GPUs. Um, that's including platinum power supplies. You don't need, you don't need risers. You don't need anything else. A lot of people get hung up on trying to put these into server cases. You literally can set these on anything that's not metal because there are contacts on the back of these motherboards. So do not set them on anything metal. Uh, I have one of mine sitting on a two by 10 or a two by eight piece of wood. The other one's actually sitting on top of the motherboard box. And then I have another one that's just sitting on a plastic shelf. So anything that won't conduct electricity, uh, so nothing will get shorted out. That's it. Um, some people also don't like how they flex uh, on the PCIe slots because there's nothing to tie the GPUs down with. So there's nothing to actually mount the GPUs down with. They just kind of sit in the slot, kind of like how you know these are doing behind me. Those are just sitting in the actual PCI Express slot of those motherboards. I, I haven't had any issues. I I've had one of mine um, actually running for almost three years now uh it's not a good idea to move them around a lot while they're plugged into those slots because you risk the weight of the cards actually doing damage but if they're sitting still in a uh, an environment that's not going to be moving which your mining environment shouldn't be moving uh you're not going to have any problems i have seen where people have engineered solutions where they actually run like a um a crossbar across and then zip tie the cards to that crossbar to keep all the cards spaced and kind of together that's a, that's that's definitely another option but yeah so with that being said hopefully this information help you helps you guys if you are running these kind of motherboards please comment down below and um, I'm curious how many other people are um, yeah actually you know what let me get some footage and throw that in of um, of my setup so let's cut to that right now all right all right guys so here is my Riser this motherboard right here. This is the S37 with the blue connectors that has the bigger spacing. You can see I can fit a little over a finger width in between them. Um, these cards are all running and cooling themselves. There's no extra fans around them or anything. Uh, it's running off of a USB drive and a 750 watt power supply. Those cables are running down, plugging into the back and then plugging into the top. To turn this motherboard off, I just turned that power supply off with the button right um, now this this one right here is the BTC 37 so it has the tighter spacing on it let me see if I can actually put my phone in there and let you guys see this sorry about the sound by the way so you see it is a cluster of wires and a little bit of a nightmare and I have to keep that box fan in front of it blowing air through those cards to keep them cool because if I don't those cards start overheating because the spacing on them is just too tight they're too close together um, with that being said though you guys have a good night i'll see you on the next one adios